podcast together and uh, as i told you earlier is that uh uh, today we'll be having a very good program as you can be able to see our teacher our mom and uh, she is already in the house ready to speak to us ready to tell us what we need to know and uh thank you very much uh dr penny to come today and be in the pair tv and uh maybe uh before we go on i can give you this minute to just say hi to our viewers welcome dr penny Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everybody. It's so nice to have all of you in the house. This is the day that the Lord has made. If you're waking up, if you're going to sleep, for me, it is uh, nearly midnight. But you know what David says? I was happy when they told me to come to the, to go to the house of the Lord. And I am imagining this is a time when God is calling us to come, uh, listen to him, talk with him, learn something. I like what Itawaga through says. Let's come and talk to one another, encourage one another, because that is the only way we are going to survive. Not alone, but together as families, together as a community, together as a people, so that we can help each other to go through the storms that we find ourselves in today, because together we will make it. Together we will cross the river of life. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Leverett Penny, for taking time to be with us tonight. And uh, maybe somebody is there is asking who is Dr. Uh, who is Leverett Penny. Maybe I can just give a, a retro biography of uh, Dr. Penny, <laughs> although she will be telling us who she is. Uh, as you can see, that uh, Dr. Penny is one of uh, if I may say, she is very blessed by God. She's a, a she's a PhD holder. And you can see she's looking very young. And if you can see that, you can just say amen. And uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Penny have a, a very interesting story. And uh, Dr. Penny can be able to give us hope, can be able to encourage somebody who is there, who is sleeping, who, who doesn't know what going to do the next time. And uh, one thing that I, I would like to mention is that uh, Dr. Penny is a... Uh, is a, is a domestic violence survivor, if I may, if, if I may use that word. Maybe somebody is there and is asking, why did you go for Dr. Penny? Dr. Penny have been uh, in a domestic violence marriage for about 30 years, and maybe there should be more because they are dating and everything. But uh, for over 30 years, she was uh, in a, a marriage that did not work so well. She was in a marriage that was very abusive. And uh, she did not come here to brag about it or to say how she is about it. She just came here so that she can be able to encourage somebody. Dr. Penny is a mother of six children and a, and a, grand, and a grandmother of about five grandchildren. And Dr. Penny, at the age of uh, 56, Dr. Penny went back to school. And at the age of 56, he graduated in, HP, in, the, in, uh, in a doctorate degree in psychology counseling. So please, Dr. Penny gonna give you hope today. If you are 20 years and you're saying that I cannot go back to school. See, Dr. Penny went back to school at the age of 56. Dr. Penny is an author. Dr. Penny have written a, a book. Please like, go to YouTube and just search Dr. Penny and she'll be telling us the name of the book because he has written a very good book that is talking of grief. And I uh, you know we always think that grief is when you die, is when, you, when somebody die. No, no, no. We grief is we all go through grief in, but the different is we go them in different stages. So that is who Dr. Penny is. And again, Dr. Penny have won several awards. In, uh, the, and being the last one was uh, in the uh, by, by 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 the mayor of Alabama, Alabama City. I don't know the exact name of the of, of the city, but uh, Dr. Penny will, will, will tell us. And uh, as you can see now, Dr. Penny is one of the nominees in Golden Award, one digital radio that are going on all over in the US. So please land there, go and vote for Dr. Penny so that she can have that, uh, uh, that she can add something on uh, her wardrobe. So thank you again, Dr. Penny, for making time for us. And to our viewers who are already with us, thank you and may the good God continue to bless each and every one of you. We are so happy to have you here today, Dr. Penny. We don't just take it for granted to see it's almost mid, it's past midnight in, uh, in Central Time and you're here, ready to talk to us and ready to encourage somebody. So thank you again, Dr. Penny, and uh, God bless you. So without uh, much ado again, 
I'll give you a minute. I did not say your name. I can give you a minute to just say your name. Uh, thank you very much, Charles. Uh, my name is Dr. Penin Joroge, born and raised in Kenya. I came to the US uh, in 2000 after a long, long journey in life. I am born again, born again during my high school years at Alliance. I do not talk about that day when I was born, and I, but I talk about being born again as a process, the journey, working with God through the valleys of life, through the good days and through bad days. Uh, uh, yes, I did go back to college at the age of 56. Actually, that is when I joined college. But I graduated with my PhD at the age of 62, nearly 63 years. And you are right, I do not talk about this. I don't, know, I don't even talk about my domestic violence and abuse experiences because I'm proud of them. But I share the story because when I was going through my own story, I grew up in that generation where you know, sharing about the abuse and everything, you would be labeled as washing your dirty linen in public. I am not here to wash my dirty linen in public. I am not proud about it. I have nothing to brag about it, but there is one thing I would brag about even today. The grace of God that carried me through those years when I was so abused, when I was so dis destroyed, that in that process, even though I was a mother, even though I was a young prof professional and I was doing well in, in my career, even though I was a young wife, I got to a point where I was so desperate. This is what domestic violence does to you. And I'm here to speak. Yes, I am willing to stay with you past midnight to give somebody a word of encouragement and to tell you that life is not over until God, is, God says it is over. It does not matter what the abuser in your life is telling you. And we are going to talk about the kind of things the abusers will tell you. The kind of things people talk about when they hear you are going through domestic violence. That is not the, the important thing, but the most important thing is what are you telling yourself? What are you hearing God telling you? <coughs> because like I said, I am living as a borrowed a second chance in life, having tried suicide twice during domestic violence. Like people of today who are going through domestic violence, those who are going through COVID-19, you go through domestic violence and before you know it, you are either depressed, you are stressed. I was depressed for 25 years. I'm not proud about it. I was sad. I was isolated. I was everything negative. Those of us who come from my culture, we, you know when somebody is depressed, either because of ignorance, we don't even talk about depression with our mental illness, which becomes part of domestic violence in so many places. But we do not talk about it as an illness. We talk about like madness. Those of you who come from my tribe, you know we call them Mogoroki. We call them that mad woman, that mad woman, that mad man. And so I hid, I covered my depression because I did not want to be labeled. You are there today. You're going through domestic violence, either because of the lockdown or you've been going through it. But now because of the COVID, it has intensified because your husband and your, or your, 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 your wife is in the house a lot more hours. You are there together, you're interacting closely and you're, you're rubbing heads and shoulders more than you've ever done before. You are noticing the negative things in each other a lot more than you did before. You tolerated each other because you would, you know, each one of you would come in in the evening. You go, to, you wake up in the morning. If you have children, you prepare them. You go to work. They and, and I mean, they, they go to school and you go to work. You you gather again in the evening. You're all in a hurry to do a B C D and then move on. Then the the for the, 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 the cycle continued every day, every morning, every night. But there was less friction or you could avoid each other but now because of the lockdown because of losses of jobs because of being forced to relate we are having an increase in domestic violence this is why i want to thank prepared tv for making a time for us to address this issue i said i'm a mother of six i'm a mother a grandmother of five but i'm also a, a woman in the making I'm not here to brag about my PhD, about anything, because like I said, 
whatever came into my life after the age of 56, surely it found me already developed. My personality, my character, my values were already developed. I went back to school and I encourage you if you are there and you're going through stuff and you're needing to regroup yourself. <laughs> you are needing to replan your life. As we go through this, I want to ask you, if you're going through domestic violence and some, and one, let me do a disclaimer here. I am divorced, but I do not advocate for divorce and separation unless it is necessary. The reverse of that is nobody deserves to be, to be abused. Nobody deserves to be living with somebody who is threatening your life. While I say I do not advocate for divorce, I will say it here. If your life is under threat, where you know that you can be killed or you can kill somebody, that is food for thought. God created you by yourself. He created your spouse by themselves. So if it gets to a point where you are thinking that you can even kill your husband or kill your wife, think about it again. It's time to move. And maybe I'm not saying that moving is immediately going to a divorce. Move and take time to think about these things. Move and give your spouse time to think about what they need or to, to look at you from a difference, to give you a chance and you give the other person a chance. And I am one who says domestic violence is not just about women. The majority of the, 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 the abused are women. Actually, the, the, the statistics are, are one in four women has gone through domestic violence or is going through domestic violence. One in nine men is being abused or has been abused. So realistically now, the, the days are gone where we, we looked at, at domestic violence as an issue for women from a gender issue. We want to remove that because we have some of our sons and our brothers. We have our uncles, we have our, our friends, we even have our, our pastors, both men and women, by the way, who are going through domestic violence because just like we say, flu, a flu, when you know when you talk about influenza, it does not care whether you are white or black. It does not care whether you are rich or, or poor. It does not care whether you are young or old. The same thing with domestic violence because domestic violence comes as a result of evil. And you know where there is evil, it does not matter. It does not, it has no boundaries, it has no shame. And so the reality as we address domestic violence today, through is that it is affecting both men and women. And the reason I choose to say this right from the onset is that is there a brother or a, or, or a father here listening? You are welcome, you are part of this group. We want you to be, to be here and to participate. And I want you to, to listen to me as a therapist saying that I am dealing with men who are abused. And I give you permission to come out and say, your life is just as important as my life as a woman who, who was abused. I do not advocate even for men being abused. Every human being is valued and nobody deserves to be abused. I think I'll leave it there and then you can, you know, pick up from there. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Penny, for reminding us that uh, everybody can be abused. And uh, we're going to go straight forward to the, uh, you just laid a very nice founda foundation for the topic of the day. And uh, maybe Dr. Penny, uh, I, I'll, I'll just throw this question to you. Uh, maybe on a, on a nutshell, when we talk of domestic violence, most of us think that when we talk of domestic violence is when somebody is physically abused. Dr. Penny, would you clarify to us there, when we talk of domestic violence, what exactly are we talking about? You are right. A lot of times when we, when we talk about domestic violence, people think that oh, you are being beaten physically, but you'll be surprised. Financial abuse is domestic violence. And that is very subtle. Domestic violence can be physical, it is psychological, it is emotional, it is material. You know, for, for example, when you are a couple and you buy land or you buy a property, and one person they know it all, instead of discussing, you you both invested, but one person decides it's going to be written in my name. The title did will come in, in my name. I went through that. We invested together, we did things together, we had business together, but everything was in this person's name. 
guess what? That is an imprisonment of a kind because at the end of it, one, when things go wrong, this person who is being sidelined when investments and everything material is being written or registered in the name of one person, you are being enslaved. You are being put in a, in a, in a prison you can never get out of. No wonder people ask me, why would you last there for 30 years? What were you waiting for? I'll tell you what I was waiting for. And I say this for many other men and women who are stuck there. You are earning, but the money is being controlled by one person. When things go wrong and your children are also being abused because the other reality is that when there is domestic violence, our children get abused. You can see your children are suffering. You can see you are suffering. You are in laws, your, your, your own siblings who, who love you and who care about you, they're also being, they're also suffering. But financial, I, I'm, a, I'm identifying in the different forms of domestic violence, material, domestic, I mean, uh, financial, emotional, psychological, physical abuse, verbal abuse, where you're being called names of all kinds. I mean, you you created a, a human being and somebody dares, a, a, you are a grown-up, they married, you went to church as grown-ups. And one morning somebody calls you a dog. I mean, that is very belittling. And it goes either way, as I say, the, you know, the, we have come to a point where women are doing it, men are doing it, and we are thinking it is okay. I want to say it is not okay for anybody because I, I just said it. When domestic violence is going on, our children, the next generation, the future generations are being negatively impacted. So perhaps you and I can run out of it tomorrow. But you know what? The damage that is going on in your children, if you are there as a mother, you are there as a father. A child looks at a mother being slapped. A child looks at a father you know, with plates being thrown at their father. There is nothing one you can do more to, to the mind of that child. So domestic violence is, comes in different forms. Not one thing, but many, many things that gradually destroy the person that is being abused, gradually demean this person, belittles them, destroys their self-esteem, shames them. You put them through stigma and shame that even when they go to work, they cannot even focus. They, they become less productive. You, you affect their work. You affect the way they relate with you in every way. And so there is no room for domestic violence. And after going through mine for all those years and by God's grace, surviving it, I feel, you know, today I, feel, I, I, I constantly feel like I'm on a mission to say it is not necessary and nobody deserves it, and it can also be stopped. If everybody decided to look at the other person with respect, domestic violence has, does not have room in our community. Sure, thank you, Dr. Penny. And uh, maybe before we go to the next segment of our, of our talk tonight, uh, yes. in your case, let me now get so personal to you. These things, that were that because uh, I understand you are you, you had physical, emotional, psychological abuse, or call it a, a, anything. Yeah, Did you see them during your when, when, when you are dating this man, or there are things mm -hmm. that you, you thought that these things are gonna change with time, or were those things there during that time? They were there, and that is why I dare speak about them. And I say I don't, I'm not proud about them, mm -hmm. but I speak to help somebody. There is a lady there, there is a young man, there is a young woman who is dating, and you have those red signs, and you are ignoring them because I know I did. One, you're born again. If, if like me, you're born again, and the, when you start quoting somebody, you know they are they, you find out they are not born again. And I'm not saying that everybody will start by being born again, but that was one red sign. But be, when they when they discover that you are born again or you are you are going to church, you are in ministry and everything, before two months are over, they are in it. They are doing exactly what you are doing. Why? To get you hooked. They will do what they will give you what they know you want. They will talk the language they know you want to hear. 
And so they start covering up. And many of us can 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 confess that we were all, we all went to church before we got married. Then after the wedding, one of you was left in church alone. What happened? Other things, somebody starts talking negative things about your parents while you are while you're courting, when you're dating, when you're planning your wedding, you hear small, small, small things, comments that don't make that leave you uncomfortable about your, your, your parents, about your siblings. And like me, you are thinking, I want peace. This is the man of my dream. If you're if like me, this is your first love. You are naive, you are anxious to get married, and if you are coming from a background where there was also a, uh, a dysfunctional family, where you know your parents were, were also having a dysfunctional relationship, you are either running away from that and thinking that I want to run away and start my own family, thinking that I want something better than this, and because of that, you ignore some things somebody starts pushing you even before you get married and then they come and apologize and they give you roses they buy you gifts two three months the same thing happens they are slamming a door at you and when you insist i'm not happy what is i, I don't like what is happening back to it again they will take you to mombasa they'll buy you things they live and buy you a car if they can afford it. They are hoodwinking you. They know you don't like drinking. Guess what? They will drink in hiding. They will drink with their friends. Then they will tell you, I, I stopped it. Because I love you this much, I am not doing it anymore. Or you, when you ask questions and you get very flimsy answers, be on the lookout. It's your life. Remember, you're putting your life on, on a plate for somebody to eat or destroy. And I fully agree that a lot of times we are so naive. We are so in a hurry to get married. But I want to remind us that when you think about it, that you know, for me, I lived in it for 30 years because I did not want to imagine me out of my marriage. I, I did everything I could to save my marriage even through the beating and everything. Again, you are ashamed of being called a divorcee. The other thing is we have pressure in the community after you are 20 years, your mother, your auntie, your uncles are beginning to ask you, oh, Shiro, when are you getting married? Gaduru, when are you getting married? When do I have grandchildren? Community pressure, family pressure, societal pressure. Those are small, small things that we need to pay attention. Are you running to get married because your friend got married? You just met this guy, but it is in the norm. We, have bo we both left high school a year ago. My friend has gotten married, so you feel like there is a clock. I want to remind all of us, this idea of saying that the clock is ticking, please, let your personal clock tick your own personal way. Don't allow your clock to tick with mine. This is a good example. I went to school at 56. My friends had already gone to college after immediately after we left Alliance. These clocks are completely out of balance. But I was willing when, when the time for came for me, I never gave up the idea of going back to college. That was one place I, I was, God gave me the grace and the wisdom. My clock will not tick like everybody else, but at the beginning, getting married and everything, I want to get married like everybody else. Your clock is your clock. Your timing is your timing. God's plans for you are you, are you as just the two of you with God. Stop copying what everybody else is doing because it's your life. I will say this again. Look at the red flags in your own life. The mind red flags would not be there, but would may not be yours. Do you have your own red flags? But I'm asking you, be alert. Don't jump into the fire just because everybody else is jumping. Others may jump into the water knowing that I can swim. You know you can't swim. 
others can jump in because they know if things go wrong, my father has a farm, I can go back and farm. You don't have a farm, you don't even have a bicycle. This other guy has a, has a motor vehicle. So I will leave it there, but I think those are enough examples that we need to be very, very personal. Do thank not you. do what every Jones is doing. Thank you, thank you. So we don't need to check the biological clock. You know, no. when you hit 40, uh, your market <laughs> continues to, to shrink. And when you hit 35 again, your market continues to, to decrease. And, uh, there in you go. and in our community, there is a saying that says, Dr. Penny, so, uh, so before we go to the next segment, let me first of all uh, sample some, uh, give a big shout to some of our viewers who are watching us tonight. I can see David Kiki is watching. Karibu san, thank you very much, David. Mary Wainina is watching. Thank you very much. I can see you, Sarah Wangoi, saying uh, tuned, tuned, uh, tuned in all the way from Limuru and saying that uh, Dr. Penny, you are doing a very good job. And I have a question. And the question is what if uh, I grew up in a domestically abused family? And he, he continues and says, I grew up in a domestic abused family. Then uh, when, when somebody sees the father and the mother doing such things, they thought that even them, they're gonna do revenge. You're going to handle that in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a second. I can see Peter Bongay all the way from uh, Kiricho is watching. Thank you very much, Peter Bongay. I can see a very good friend and uh, one of uh, the one of the Pepea TV broadcasters, MC Josh, is watching and saying, keep doing good job. I can see Zurumat. Zuru thank you very much, Zurumat, for watching this program. Liz, Liz, thank you very much for watching and saying, tuned in, enjoying this show. That's what they're saying. Uh, 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 Anne Vera saying, following very closely. Anne is saying, I'm following very closely because I'm about mm -hmm. to get married. You better do that. You hear that? Following closely because I'm about to get married. Uh, Waja Jane saying, thank you, Dr. Penny Joroge. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for your contribution to our community here in the U.S. Thank you very much. That's somebody thanking you. And... Uh, uh, Becky Johnson, good to see you, my friend, Dr. Penny Joroge. That's your Thank friend. You. Thank and, you. And uh, all the way, we have Kanyanya Lucy Mugambi saying that uh, in the world, I volume in Kopoa. Thank you very much. Uh, volume, please, from your side. Oh, okay, we are working on a uh, volume from my side. And please let me let me know if the volume or the sound from my end, you are getting me loud and clear. Uh, please let us know if you can, you, you can be able to get us from this end. Uh, Dr. Penny. Yes. Uh, now we are we are going back into your case again. Now those were the red flags that came during dating. Now you get into married, and you are there for thirty years. Mm -hmm. There are two questions that we are, are we going to ask ourselves: How and why? I wish I didn't have to answer those questions, but I will try to. One, uh -huh. let me begin by the, the uh, by answering that the question of this person, our friend, who said they are they are they are raised in a domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. And you heard me talk about the fact that we better be very very careful that the much we are tolerating domestic violence, we need to be alert. And I want each one of us to 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 think about it from a very different angle that domestic violence. And for me also, when you ask me why and how, I came to realize on later on because in the beginning I am focused about the fact that I'm being beaten, I'm going through hell and I, I am being financially deprived and everything. But I wasn't paying attention to the damage it was doing to my children who are very afraid. And that whoever is talking about growing up in that environment, children grow afraid, they grow blaming themselves or Maybe if, if I wasn't born, my mommy and daddy would not be fighting. Or if I didn't need school fees or food or clothing, they would not have to fight. The children start blaming themselves. And because even the most of the abusers, especially, I'm sorry to say this, the Wagadru, but a lot of the men in my generation who are abusing our parents would come beat the mothers and the children and then disappear. So the mother is left for defending for the children. And I think it, it, still, it still happens even today. 
but the especially the boys would think it was a good thing it was macho man you know they were being macho like they were being like men and i want to bring it here something i've written to myself that a lot there is there are some cultural norms traditions that make it good when a man is fighting at home you or oh, you are you're proving yourself as a man honestly you your wife married you because you are a man or if it is your wife your wife mar your husband married you because he needed a wife he did not buy you to be a brute i mean he did not marry you so that you can go and fight so the the, the people who are brought up under these dysfunctional families have a tendency remember that children are the best copycats and if we do not realize that this is happening and god help you before it is too late if you are the one being abused that you realize somewhere along the way that my children are absorbing this and they are going to be abusers and unless i talk about it unless we deal with it now if you are going to leave it until they are grown up they are married and they start doing the same thing healing that would take much longer what i did for me is when i realized that my children were behaving they were they were looking very scared and then they would start fighting between themselves my mother told me be on the lookout your children are soaking your children are, are smelling what you are going through and i said at the beginning the worst you can do to any child is when they watch their mother being abused whichever way and so that is what when i realized that i started talking with my children one of the things that kept me going there for long i talked about financial abuse i'm a professional i'm uh, i'm a professional i'm making good money but he's controlling every dollar every every penny so that was be would be one of the reasons why i would hang in there because we and i'm not going through these things because we are poor but he's controlling everything my children are in good schools we have good cars and everything but i do not control any of my penny while i'm making that money professionally he's controlling everything I'm not here to mess up his name we made it up I worked I I moved on with my life we moved on with this life I no longer dwell on that but it is important for me to share that this is what held me back had I known that this is where it was leading I might have, I might have done it differently talk about the red flags the red flag was the issue of my money being controlled by one person investments being controlled by one person happened very early in our marriage and because i didn't want any fights i didn't want any confrontations i gave in this is the deal do not say yes just for the sake of saying yes make your make your wills known make your desire no desires known right from the go when you get married or when you're planning your marriage do not be a coward to say yes when you know that you really need to be saying no and this is something i teach when i do therapy in other areas we need to learn to say no don't say yes to please somebody do not let somebody belittle you do not let somebody put so much fear in you that even when you know they are putting you in a corner they are pushing you in a corner where you cannot do anything for yourself learn to to make your own mind we can have a joint account but everybody should have access to that let it not be that false or fake joint account where it is a joint account just for the sake of it but you cannot access even a penny you cannot access anything so when things go wrong how am i going to move out i cannot even rent a room for my children i cannot even feed them i cannot continue paying school for them so ask me why i said for those 30 years i got to a point depressed and so suicidal as i was where all i wanted was to see my children out of you know finish their school get what they needed so i became the sacrificial lamb you are there you are listening to me the problem of being the sacrificial lamb is that i also became very suicidal and if it was not for god I should be dead and alive. Uh, what do you need to what precautions do you need to take? 
who are you talking to? Who do you have? And the other thing they do is they isolate you. You cannot visit your friends. You cannot talk to your family. You cannot even talk to your pastor because they want to make sure that nobody knows what you're going through. After all, they'll buy your Mercedes and buy your a home in Karen or Loving to cover it up. If you are here in diaspora, who knows what you're going through? We have a lot of people in our diaspora community who are going through hell. But the people back in Kenya think, oh, Wajiru is in America and she's in a good marriage. After all, she's in America. She's a Dr. Penny. But you don't know, we need to take interest in really what is behind all these facades. We cover it up. And then because of the societal demands, we don't want to say that I am going through domestic violence because the moment people know that you are going through domestic violence, there is laughter. You are being mocked. You are being labeled. You are being condemned. It is your fault. Or oh, what do women want? He, she's married to a very rich guy. She's driving this and she's driving that. What does she want? Little do you know that I am driving a new Mercedes. Little do you know that I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, whole, I'm, I'm carrying the best handbag, but I don't sleep. How many people around you are going through the same thing? Your first lady in your church. Allow me to say this. I am a minister myself. I was going through this. That time I was not ordained, but I was in ministry. But I covered it up because who wants the people I am ministering to to know that I'm also an abused woman? So this, the, the, this, the play, I mean, the society plays a very big part in nurturing domestic violence because we are not very compassionate when people are going through it. People hide. Another thing I don't like forgetting is when we see the Bible says, I think in the... There is a place in the Bible where the where where God where we say that God hates divorce. Yes, He does. I know I know He does, and I know it is somewhere. I can, I'll get it. He hates divorce, but He has not said anywhere He hates the divorcee. He hates divorce, not the divorcee. Why? I say this from a ministry, from as a minister. He hates divorce because of what divorce does to His people. Here I am as a minister, if somebody comes to me, I'm a therapist, I'm a minister, and they come and tell me, oh, I'm going through this and the other. Oh, you know God hates divorce, you need to just go back. Am I going to tell you to go back there? You are, you are telling me he's threatening with a gun, he's threatening with knives. Am I going to tell you to go back there just for the sake of keeping your name so that you have a public image? One, your children is, are seeing this. No wonder we have that person who is living under in, in domestic violence as from parents, but they cannot do anything about it because they are observing all this. God hates divorce, not the divorcee. I know he loves me. Am I perfect? I am a woman in the making and I'm not advocating for, I'm not encouraging divorce. I always say, do your very best until the very end. The, the reason I finally walked away is death threats. That's when I realized not only am I going to die for myself, but I'm going to die for my children. My parents were alive then. Why should I put my parents through that? Just because people are going to talk. I say, stop worrying what everybody is going to say. Stop worrying what everybody is going to think, because when you die, you die alone. You leave orphans. You leave people who love you suffering. Your life is worth everything. Uh, thank you, Dr. Penny. And uh, that's a lot of wisdom down there, is that God does not hate the divorcee. God hates the action of the divorcee. And uh, yes. I can just sample some of the questions again that are coming in. Uh, I see one of your neighbor by the name, Rachel, size eight, uh, all the way from Birmingham. Is watching. Hey, hi, to Rachel. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> He's saying that I love Dr. Penny. And I can see my auntie Nancy Dulo is watching and saying, uh, great topic, good job, mom, keep on teaching. Uh, Thank you. Dulo, Matt is saying, I love you, your advice, Dr. Penny, especially about the crop teaching. I was worried since most of my admit are married and I was getting depressed. Thank you so much. Did you hear that, Dr. Penny? Tell her to hold on until God gives her, because if God wants, by the way, there is, 
there is room for people to remain single. Paul says that in the Bible. So let's stop pushing people to get married. I have six children. God, some of them are married, others are not married. It's not my business to tell them when to marry or who to marry. Mine is to pray for them and allow God's will. That sister or that brother who says that, it's not our business to do that for you, but pray to God. If God wants you to get married, he will provide. Uh, thank you. And uh, Beatrice one zero all the way from Doha is saying that a uh, powerful topic, Dr. Penny. God thank you, Beatrice. And uh, let me sum for one more. Uh, Omboy Mirengo say thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor, for all that. Uh, better put on the sub. Uh, I cannot be able to. Say, sorry, that that went away. Uh, Ruth Wanjema or uh, Mrs. Mora is saying God hates divorce, and he's saying that it's Malachi two sixteen, the one that you are looking about the God hates divorce. It's Malachi two sixteen. And now uh, boy Mirengo continues to surely children see and know more than parent thinks. And uh, they just continue saying that uh, children can be able to see and think more than the parents can think. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Penny, now we are to you again. Now, now yes. in your personal life again. What are some of the physical threats that are not physical abuse that you, you receive from your end? And a lot of people down there are still continuing to, to, to get them. And they think uh, probably until this man break my leg, you know, that's the time that I'm going to walk out. What are some of the physical abuse you did you receive or did you experience, rather? I'm glad you mentioned about the, the breaking of the bones and also, the, you know, the, some of the things that you find people going through. Uh, somebody will come to the office and they have a black eye. And they say, I fell and I hit my, myself on the bed. Those black eyes that women cover, I used to wear a headscarf. And you ask me, why are you wearing a headscarf? It's a style. It's, I, I, I'm just being fashionable. You know me, you know your friends. Know your friends enough so that when they start doing some funny stuff, dig deeper into that. If you care about them, look into those signals because they will come and before you know it, they are dead. The other thing is this person is always blaming you. They say, you know, they, 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 you're always being blamed. You're not smart enough. I am an Alliance Girls product. But I can't tell you how many times I would be told you're good for nothing. And I'm saying this because I know women are living with that. Men are living with that. You are not bringing enough money in the house. You are not good. You are not providing well enough like Baba so and so and Mama so and so. They are comparing you with other, with other people all the time. Or you are not dressing well. You are not smart enough. You married me because you knew I was smart, because you, you loved me the way I was. What has happened, I don't dress well enough anymore. Those are some of the, the telltale things. The other thing is they are, more, they are abusing you psychologically. Like I said, you are being belittled. You are being, they are shaming you or you are overweight, you are underweight. There is nothing good you do. This person is almost like they are chasing after you with a, with a torch or with a flashlight, looking, looking for your mistakes. You speak, there is nothing good that comes out of your mind, out of your mouth. What has changed? Ask yourself, what, has, what is going on? These things I was never told during our dating and our courting. But suddenly now I'm married and now I can't cook well. During your dating, you would cook and he would say, oh, I have never eaten something. I have not eaten ugali like this one, nyeni like this one. Suddenly you are not cooking good. I like, your, I like the way you clean your, your house when he came to visit you or when you went to visit him. Whatever you did then, they praised you. Suddenly they become narcissists. They become sadists. You're doing nothing. They, then when they want to control finances, you got married as an adult. I was already working. I was managing my money. I was helping my family with whatever I was making because I stopped at Form 4 to help educate my siblings. So I was managing my money. Suddenly, somebody takes over the financial controls because you are, you are not good with your money. Another red sign. Or you, you know, everybody, the, 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 the in-laws and everybody, and I want to say this for those of us who have in-laws, 
I have daughters-in-law, but I do not ever call them my daughters-in-law. I prayed for daughters in love and God blessed me with two daughters that I call my daughter. So I started with, the reason I say I have six is because I have, biologically I have three sons and one daughter, but God gave me two daughters. And I am saying this for men and women who are out there, you have prayed for daughters or your sons are getting married, your daughters are getting married. Can we please erase this in-law business because it is also messing up and bringing domestic violence. That was part of my domestic violence. I cannot hide that. Let them rest in peace because they are already gone. But I am saying this because it is still happening today. The reason I talk in public nowadays is not for my fun. I'm done with mine, but I have children. I have young people like you who are, who are raising families now. If you do not ever want somebody to touch your son or your daughter, if you told me you have a son and a daughter, I mean, I can imagine if somebody touched your daughter today, I, 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 I can only imagine what you would do to them. Sure. I'll throw a challenge at you. Why would you want somebody, why would you want your son to go touching somebody's daughter the wrong way? Oh, yeah. I am throwing this to us who, are, who have children. What you don't want done to your daughter, don't ever allow your sons to go and do it out there. That was the way I dealt with my sons. They were very passionate about their sister. And one of the things we agreed, I see you very, very productive, pro protective over your sister, Mombi. Promise me one thing, the girls you marry who have brothers, don't you ever touch somebody's daughter. Don't you ever touch somebody's sister the way you don't want done to your sister. The God tells us, do unto others the way you want done. This should be some of the morals we need to be using. Our society is very one-sided at times. You hear of boys being raised to be men. You, you, you need to behave like a man. Does behaving like a man slapping mean that you, you go on slapping your wife and you slap your wife in front of, you, of her mother or your mother and they say nothing? I am not for that. That is something, those are some of the cultural norms that we need to get rid of in our community. It is okay for a man to slap, but wait until a woman raises a hand. It is chaos everywhere. And let me explain some of the phenomena we are having now that we are having women abusing men. And I, am, I do not advocate for that because you heard me say, I have three sons, don't you touch my son. I have my brothers. I have my I have other I have nephews and don't touch any of them. In the same token, some of the things are happening because these girls grew up with fathers beating their mothers. The sad thing is some of them who have come to me as abusers have told me that I never meant to grow up as an abuser to my husband. But this is what happened. I swore to myself. I will never be treated by any man the way my, my mother was treated. So back to the society, back to the background where our children are growing, seeing their mothers and their fathers slap one another. Your children are copying. What you do not want to see happening tomorrow, please take care of it today. We cannot leave these things and pretend they are not happening. A bad thing is a bad thing. It does not matter whether it's my son doing it, or my daughter doing it, or another, or the, the daughter of so and so. We need to go back to the to the concept that a child. I mean, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. When we get back to the basics, and I like what you're doing with the wagaduru, back to the basics. That is one basic we need to go back. Where are our morals? Where did we go wrong? We stopped protecting our children as a community. And we raised some of them to be brutes. We gave our boys permission. Okay, here you are telling them, boys don't cry, but they can go and hurt other, other, they can just go and beat up their sisters. When they beat up a sister in the house, you tell them you cannot beat your sister, you need to protect your sister. But when he grows up and starts beating his wife, it's okay, that's what men do. That's what I used to be told, oh no. If he cannot beat his sister, if it is not okay for him to slap his sister, why would you say it is okay for him to go slapping his wife? 
the same thing with the boys, with the girls. If the girl is not supposed to, to go, you know, kicking and slapping her, her brother, why would you allow her to go and kick her husband when they get married? We need to, to, I mean, to balance these things and remove the evil from among us because the sad thing is that domestic violence is now leading to suicide. It is leading to alcoholism. It is leading to substance abuse and drugs, homicides, suicides. What next? We in the diaspora know that this is something we have been dealing with with the, within the last two years, I remember last year at the beginning of the year, within two months, we lost 20 young people to suicide. How many more do we need to, to lose to say enough is enough? We cannot lose anymore. No. We need to, we need to mark it now and you need to say this is enough is enough and do what you are supposed to do. A uh, very important, uh, Dr. Penny, what you just mentioned is that uh, men do not cry, and they are always told that uh, Monaume ni kujika, ni kujikaza. kujikaza. Monaume ni kujikaza. Uh, as Dr. Penny takes a cup of water, I would like to also remind you that uh, let's remember that uh, COVID is real. We are living in a uh, in dangerous time, so please make sure that uh, you are, you're, you're taking good care of yourself. If you are sick, make sure that you don't go to work we have had so many other people from our community you know you're not feeling well but tunasema ah juada nikienda hospitali ah ndabio tu nikunywe maji ya dimu let me just kunywa dimu and go to work please we beg you if you know you're not feeling well may stay at home another thing is that are we having these are question i'm asking every one of us are we having good quite time ask yourself that question in case you have covid today where are you going to go? Make sure you have a quarantine plan. It's important, my people. And uh, another thing is that uh, if you're not feeling well, go and get tested. Now the vaccine is here with us. Come on, you need it. Please kindly go and have the vaccine. And I uh, want to thank uh, Pastor Martin uh, from uh, Covenant Life Church and Community Health for sponsoring this program and uh, letting us to remind our people that they should take good care of themselves. Please make sure that you wash hard. These are not the days that are, we, we used to greet one another, we used to hug one another. We have done that for so many years. You can just wave at people. And if you don't have to go out, if you don't have to go for gathering, kindly stay at home. COVID-19 is real. Until it comes to your door, you cannot know that. It's affecting us in so many other ways. You, When you're sick, maybe you cannot be able to go to work. And other things that come there, you have bills, you have, the, you have, you have people to take care of here and back at home. Let's make sure that you are taking good care of yourself. Again, thank you to Covenant Life Church and uh, Community Health for seeing it's important for us to remind our people and for sponsoring this program. God bless you, community, uh, no, Covenant Life Church under the leadership of uh, Pastor Martin Degua. God bless you and the entire team. Now, uh, Dr. Penny, yes. uh, I can lead uh, something here from Nyokabi uh, wa uh, Mwangi. They say, Vumiria tu mwanamke nikuvumiria. They say, mwanamke nikuvumiri, nikuvumiria. That's what our community says. Vumiria mwanamke nikuvumiria. And they, they, they also go ahead and tells you, my ma, me and your dad, your dad have done these things over and over. And others will ask you, is that man coming home? Oh, that is good. Bumiria. Uh, and uh, uh, Kanyanya is saying, wow, what a great topic. One of the best I love with doctor is erabolating. That's, uh, that's Lucy Mugambi. He's, uh, she's, she does a very good job. And she has uh, some uh, very nice Kikuyu uh, movies that are so good, so learn to use on YouTube and just search Kanyanya Stars or Luze Mugabe. You just see her and see her wonderful movies. Uh, this is a good friend of mine. He's the owner of Mokorino in, uh, in one of our villages. Uh, and I say, hey, you're talking, doctor, continue talking. Thank you very much, Karanja. Uh, Esther Mongi is saying, this is true. And uh, Wawelo Samuel is watching with us. And my friend, my good friend, uh, 
Mogiwama Nudu is watching and uh, another good friend of mine by the name Bishop Mehemehe is watching. Thank you very much, Bishop Mehemehe, and God bless you. And Nyokabi is saying, Nyokabi Wamongi is saying, we should also include emotional abuse in the domestic abuse, which is not discussed. Dr. Penny, you will touch about that. I uh, think that we should also include emotional abuse in the domestic abuse, which is not discussed. Uh, then Elizabeth Karao is saying, when you see red flag, learn away. Uh, before you answer that question, and uh, uh, Peter Bonge is saying, this could be the best show you have done so far. Uh, thank you very much, my good friend, Peter Bonge. Peter is saying, this is the best program. She always follows our program from the day we started this program until I think that this is one of the best programs that can be that we are watching today. Thank you, thank you. And if you have a question, kindly drop that question. Uh, Dr. Pen, uh, Dr. Penny, before you before you go to uh, this question, we should also include emotional abuse. Uh, before you talk about emotional abuse, uh, probably, Dr. Penny, would you tell somebody to stay for 30 years like you did? No. That's why I come that's why I come out and say run for your life because your life matters and about emotional uh, abuse I did mention it maybe I did not stress it enough and actually that is I, I'm glad our sister brought it up because that is the killer that is the worst of it all because when you are being physically abused you come with a broken leg you will tell us oh I fell in the bathroom or this that and the other we will know something is going on but psychologically, you are working, you groom yourself. If you are working, you go to work, then you come home, you cook for your children, you jump into bed with your depression. Emotional, emotional abuse is the one that is leading into so many, it trickles into so many area, other areas because when you're emotionally, you are psychologically, you are, you are very lethargic, you are very irritable. I mean, you, 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 you don't even feel like eating. That the relationship between you and your spouse, intimate, there is, there, there, there is very little intimacy going when you're emotion, psychologically abused, I mean, emotionally abused. And that is when we end up saying, guess what? There is spousal rape. Because when that is happening, nothing is happening between the two of you. So it is important that we, are, we don't, don't deny the fact that I am emotionally strained, I am emotionally abused. Because you want to survive. And again, because of the shame and the stigma, we have put on domestic violence the fact that we are not we are not able to accept the fact that this person is genuinely abused. This person needs our help. We are quick at judging them. And that is why some of us, part of my remaining there for so long, remember I said I was in ministry. I was as, at all since cathedral. Many of you might know me from there. I started off the HIV and AIDS program. I am in the youth ministry. I am in the women ministry praying for marriages, but nobody knows that mine is on the rock. There is a public image I'm trying to protect, and many ministers will say the same thing. Oh, how, how am I going to say that I'm going through this? What are people going to think away with that? And so you leave it there because you're trying to keep a public image but you're living a lie. I was the master cover-up. I always make a joke that before I got my PhD in, as a counseling psychologist, I had two, 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 two PhDs in covering up and lying. It's very hard for me to admit that, but I say this because somebody else is there doing the same thing, covering it up and coming out. This is a joke we make. How are you doing, Dr. Penny? I am good. I am blessed and highly favored. And I always ask, really, are you? Is that the truth? I will not ask you that, but sometimes as a psychologist, I can read it on your, on your face. You just told me that you are blessed and highly favored, but I can tell from your voice, from your countenance, the non-verbal communication, that you are bleeding on the inside. And I know I'm not the only person. I know through there are people you can look at and say that I today so and so does it. Today, Dr. Penny is trying to put a face, but she's not looking good. And I'm inviting us to be interested in the in the lives and the affairs of our families. 
don't be not to snoop in them, not to motion, not gossiping about them. But can you be such a, a trusted friend so that when I am really hurting, I can be confident, I can be comfortable to come and tell you, you know what? I came to work today, but the, it was a mess last night. I, I, I need some comfort. I need some encouragement. What, I need some guidance. But how am I going to come and tell you what I am going through? I told you yesterday, you went and broadcasted it. I tell you, pray for me. And sometimes it is unspoken prayer request. But maybe even when I say that, you can guess why I'm saying that. The next thing, it is on Facebook. Can we pray for Dr. Penny? You know I am on Facebook. If I want it there, I'll put it there. Or it is on WhatsApp. It's on whatever media. Please stop exposing people so that when they have some need, they will feel I mean, confident and comfortable to come to you and tell you they need help. This is why we are having people who are going through stuff. They are hurting so bad. They are so broken. They are being abused but they cannot come and confide in you. And the next thing, they have committed suicide. The next thing, they killed their children and they killed themselves just a couple of months ago. And then the issue of somebody, when they go to their families, this young girl in Moranga who went and told the mother, I am going through serious domestic violence and abuse. The mother tells her, you know what, you are married go back to where you are married because we tell the issue of a dowry is another dirty thing because we paid a dowry you cannot stay here you need to go back and take your children she did not go back to her home instead she killed her she threw her children in a dam and threw herself the next thing we are hearing she killed herself and killed her children because when they come to you you are not welcoming them you are too ashamed i am a minister I don't want to have a daughter who is divorced because it is going to impact on my name as a minister. We are more conscious of the image. What are people going to say when they hear that I am a mother of a divorced woman or man? Would you rather have them dead, killed in a, in a domestic violence, or would you rather have them you know, divorced or separated but available to raise their children. I am raising issues that we are not wanting to address. There is shame in this. We are so concerned about the public image without thinking about the consequences we are raising in the lives of these people we are forcing to stay in. We married you. You said it very with the other the women are supposed to go to Maria. We are supposed you are supposed to just swallow it and keep quiet. For how long? For how long are you telling them to do this? And they are telling you that I was stabbed. Or this guy has a gun in the house. And he's threatening me. And you're telling them, oh, you need to go. We, we, like, like you said, your mother and I, your father and I have done this. And now it is quietening. How long do you know it is going to take them? Your situation was your generation. My daughter's situation is, is her generation. There are a lot more weapons around them. They have, they have, there's a lot more volatile situations than there were when, when my mother was being beaten. So I cannot force my daughter to go and live like her grandmother. Sure. Again, when they like, there are resources. So even back in Kenya here, there are places where they can go and say, give me a shelter for a couple of days when I recollect, when I can work on my mind. Out here in the diaspora, we have shelters. Please don't push somebody to go back and be killed. And then we gather tomorrow to raise $30,000 to, to bury them. Give them that, give them the $5,000 today to feed their family. To, because sometimes they keep, they stay in because I can't feed my family. So what do I do? And they come and tell you that and you tell them, go back and stay there because I don't have the money. I want us to start looking at it this way. We are telling people that they go back and do the worst. Guess what? We are the same community that is being called to come and bury them. Sure. Wow. That's a lot of wisdom, Dr. Penny. We are the same community that you are called to come and bury them. And we yeah. are the same community 
that you are telling them you need to stick there. You need to yeah. be there. You don't need to move. Uh, Dr. Penny, we are almost coming to the end of our program. And uh, maybe I would, uh, maybe for like some few minutes, we may talk about uh, stigma and shame after domestic violence. But before that, let me sample some of the comments that are coming in here. I can see Ruth Kamau, that is my wife. Thank you very much for watching and saying that uh, Dr. Penny, you're doing a good job. God bless you. I can see a lot of pair of cases saying, uh, Vumiria, Vumiria, Kabisa. Uh -huh. That's what they were told, that you are Vumiria, Vumiria, Kabisa. Uh, uh, Grace Karaoke Counselor, thank you very much for watching. And I uh, can see you're calling people. God bless you, Grace Karaoke. Grace Karaoke is a counselor who was here on this program last week. And thank you very much, uh, Grace Karaoke. And Nyokambi Wabwangi is, uh, is calling people. Very, thank you very much, Nyokambi, and God bless you for following. Uh, uh, Kamunde Steven, my good friend from Kent, thank you for watching. Evangelist Luce Nyaga, very true mom. Uh, Kanyanya saying, I'm stuck there. Family and friends broadcasting your story. He's saying yeah. that I'm stuck there, family and friends broadcasting your story. And somebody else is, uh, is uh, uh, how is this? A loss of Petrota saying, uh, 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 Lurashio should be banned. That's a topic for another day, thank you. And Jane Irongo saying, Dr. Penny is one of the best professionals in the diaspora. Thank That's you. Uh, Jane Irongo is saying that uh, Dr. Penny is one of the is one of the is one of the professional counselor we have in diaspora. I have Tabekirodi. Thank you very much, Tabe, all the way from from uh, Lenton watching. Uh, Joseph Moy is watching with us, and a lot of other people that are watching together with us. Beatrice Wanjiro watching with us. Bishop Mehemehe, all the way from Bangkok, is watching with us. And uh, I can see Motuma Kilema. Thank you for such a great session. That's Motuma Kilema. Now, uh, Dr. You. Penny, we are almost coming to an end of our broadcast. And uh, maybe briefly, I would like you to talk about the stigma and shame that uh, most of the time we, we are stuck there because of what going to follow the shame, the community, the social media. Remember like this generation now, probably we had a lot of photos that we posted together. Maybe I'm a, I'm a, I'm a religious leader. I'm doing counseling that I used to do back then in uh, All Saint. So that shame and stigma that comes after the, yeah. the, the, you, the, the, let's say, maybe after the breakup and uh, because of this domestic violence. Can you just uh, highlight to us about the shame and our stigma? That's a very, very, is a stinging topic to deal with because yes, you, you take me back to my own days and I, and I know the people are raising it because it's a place of pain, it's a place of shame. It's a place nobody should ever be pushed in because a lot of times you are pushed there by what you think. My friends, they looked at me, they admired me because of the titles I have held or the titles, I, the things I have done. Or I look like a good role model to them, like a role model of a wife, the role model of a, of a, of a big man's wife and everybody. And you are there, you also have your own titles. We all have our, our own stories. One of the things I want us to remember that you are not your problem. You can, you should not be defined by your failure. You should not let your divorce and separation define you. If you are a parent who, whose parenting is failing, because we divorce comes with a, a, a whole lot of problems. It affects the way you are parenting because you are distressed, you are sad, you are anxious. Your parenting is affected. Your performance as a professional is affected. And so there's shame wherever you where you are working. People hear about it and they start talking. Why well, thought she was a Christian? Yes, I am still a Christian, but I am a total human being. And again, yes, I am a Christian, but in a marriage, it takes two people. You know me. Do you know the other person? I know you. But I've not met your wife to, to be able to judge you and say that just because I know Ruth looks like this or Ruth must do this. It takes, unless I know the two of you, I cannot judge you or judge your wife because of what is happening. 
So it is very, very critical for us. It, it has to start with us as a society. How are we treating people? How are we, what is our part? What part are we playing that is causing people to go into hiding when marriages break? Instead of coming for counseling, they're even ashamed to come for, for counseling. By the way, I do the online therapy. I am a telehealth provider. So if you are ashamed of going to a counselor, you know, uh, just who, who sees you in the office, I'm available. I am a pastoral counselor, so you can call me from whichever state. We'll talk. I've gone through it, and I always say that I do not cancel from my PhD. I cancel through my pain. I cancel from a relevant place where I can hear you and not judge you. And that is what we are needing from many of us. And I like what I, I, it's nice to hear Grace Karaoke there. She's also a very, very good one, a very professional lady, one with experience and as a professional. And I know there are many others who can share what I am saying. We need to know ourselves. Remember that before you became married, before you became a mother, before you became this, the Bible says you are unique, you are beautiful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, not because either one that you can or either one you know what you You are penny, you are child, and you are beautiful. So whatever happens after you get married and after you get these children and after you have invested, you are a doctor so and so and doctor the other. You are who God created. So do not allow your circumstances to define you. Do not allow people around you to define you because the truth is. Your mother does not know as much about you as God knows about you. I do not know about my children and they don't know about me, but God knows about you. So what people think about you should be irrelevant. But sometimes it is very hard to, dis to divorce myself from the fear of what people are going to say. We are relational human beings. And I want you to put yourself in the position of the person you are blaming. If you are put, if you are asked to sit on her chair, how would you be behaving? When I started this program, when we started talking, I was feeling very cold, but I get passionate as we continue and I'm feeling warm because we need to talk about it and admit that we need one another, we need help. Do not shame me because I have failed. That is not the end of me. My, my, I think it's a book of Micah. Chapters 8, no, chapter 7, verse 8. Do not celebrate because I have failed. Because one of these days I'm going to rise again. Don't, my enemy. Do not celebrate that I have fallen. I am going to rise out of, out of here and I will grow up again. So don't celebrate other people's failures because what has happened to Dr. Penny can very easily happen to you. If not to you, it can happen to somebody you love. I do not wish divorce or separation and the pain I went through and the pain that those who have gone through the same journey have gone through. I don't wish it on my worst enemy. I do not wish it on anybody, but at the same time, because God says that he turns our tears into testimonies. He has done that for me. Yes, I was a mess. He has turned that into a message. That is why I dare come and give a message that there is life after divorce. There is life after failure. There is life after problems. Don't allow people to shame you and to disregard you. Am I saying it is easy? It's been a process. It's 20 years plus. I am not where I was 20 years ago. And I am still traveling. The, the most important thing is that I have accepted myself. I have learned to love myself and not to give up on myself. And I'm using me as an example. So if you are there and you're going through these things, if it works, it works. The one thing I would recommend is do not jump out too quickly. Give it your very best so that you, when you jump out by necessity, you are not left saying, I wish. Do not leave room for I wish. And that was my problem. But again, do not overstay. I did overstay. How do I know I overstayed? When I got suicidal, later on I realized that I pushed myself to the extreme. And if it was not by God's grace, I should not be alive.
And I pray I don't ever get there again. And I pray you don't ever get there because you can try and survive, you can try and go overboard. So do not overstay to the point where you might end up taking your life. Do not overstay to the point where you can end up killing the person who is abusing you because it has happened. They can push you overboard and you kill somebody. It is not worth it. Sure. You started alone, you can do it again. And remember that God says, do not be afraid. They might walk away, but I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. God did it yesterday for somebody. He will do it again. He has done it for Dr. Penny. He will do it for somebody today. And if you are there, you are listening to me. I'm not saying jump out. But I just want to remind you that you do not want to risk your life. Don't live with somebody who's telling you that somebody is dying in this house and it is you. Those death threats very quickly amount into real deaths. Don't worry what we are going to say when you jump out because jump out for your life. If you die, we'll bury you and move on with our lives. You are going, if you die, you are going to leave your children alone. You leave a mother who has been crying for you, crying alone. It is not worth it. Wow. It's not worth it to, to die for somebody. No. You leave your kids behind. You leave your family behind. You just have to move on with life. Do, uh, very important, Dr. Penny. Don't overstay and don't move out very quickly. It's, it's a very thin line. Yes, it is. It is very thin. Don't go very fast and don't overstay. It's you to choose how you're supposed to be. And Dr. Penny is not advocating for divorce. And uh, he said that uh, God hates divorce, but uh, God does not hate the divorcee. Dr. Penny, what's the name of your book? My book is uh, Healing Hope for Your Grief and Bereavement. Uh-huh. And the book is not just about losing somebody to death because when I say that, I, I hope I have a copy somewhere. If I don't, yeah, I don't, I thought I had it with me. It's his oh, healing, no, no. Ho healing hope for your grief and bereavement. Hold on, just I say minute. it's not just about losing somebody to death, but what Hold about on, the grief? Hold on just a minute. Say the, okay. say the name of the book again. Healing hope for your grief and bereavement. Okay, uh, I need to give three books here on, on tonight. And uh, I just you, you don't need to do a lot of things. You just need to write the heading of, of the, the name of the book. Say it again, Dr. Penny. The first Healing. three people get a book. Okay. Healing, hope for your grief and bereavement. Thank you. So the first three people to get that, they will each get a, a copy of your book. So go ahead now. Okay, I was saying that this is a very easy read book. It is on in uh, Amazon.com and it is also as on a, on a, as an ebook for your Kindle. The book is not just about losing somebody to death. I have chapters on that, but I have also chapters on what about what happens? The grief you feel when your marriage breaks. Nobody brings a brings you food. Nobody sends you a, a, a condolence card. What about when you get a terminal illness, a permanent illness where you, you lose your job, you go into foreclosure. Nobody knows about that because you are, you are even ashamed of looking like a failure. What about when you, are paid, when you have raised your children in church? They are, they are now gone out and started drinking. They are doing drugs. They are whatever, but the, the opposite of everything you instilled in them. What about when you have a broken relationship? Domestic violence, those are grievances that are going on in our lives daily, but we do not talk about them because they come with shame and stigma. And these are the people, instead of getting the support and the, 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 the encouragement, they get blamed, they get judged, they get condemned. So this is why I'm saying these are grievances where you don't get the necessary support. Our community is quick at judging. Or she, what did why, we thought she was a Christian? Why would she get divorced? That's a grief you don't even want to talk about. What about oh the children of Dr. Penny are, are on drugs? Oh, they are there. They are doing that. Dr. Idawaka son 
is running around and doing A, B, C, D. I never raised my children to go wrong. You never raised your children to go wrong. But life happens to any of us. So those are grievances in that book. It's an easy book. I have copies. You can in inbox me. I can send you copies. You can get them from Amazon.com. But it is, and I'm writing another one on mental health. By the way, it's, it's up in the making. Uh, thank you, Dr. Penny. And uh, God bless you for thank you. that good and wonderful book that you have written. I want to see who are our winners for today for the book because we want to give three books today. And uh, I can just sample some uh, something that is written here by by Grace by, by Councillor Grace Karaoke Delito. He's saying, uh, "Thank you, Dr. Penny. We continue to do the ministry of setting the children of, of setting the children of of God free from the fear and bondage of society, society and religious expectation." Isaiah sixty one is our mission. That Councillor Grace. Yes. And continue saying, do not celebrate other people failure. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, then we have Bishop Peter N. Dungo. Bishop Peter Dungo. Uh, thank you, Dr. Penny, for using your life experience, heart and pain to come through and are very powerful. It is very rare for, for us professionals to be such open. God keep you held and strong for your life is and I is an yeah for your life is an open book. He's saying that your life is an open book, but most of the professional, most of the pastors, and your pastor, they don't come out. Most of people who are in career, they don't come out. They pretend that everything is going on very well. Uh, I don't take death threats lightly. That's Grace saying, uh, don't give exes like this. He or she was just angry. It doesn't mean nothing. Don't say mm -hmm. that he or she was angry. Death threats are death threats. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Selena, so thank you very much, Selena, for following. And uh, our first book goes to Wanja Jane, Healing Hope for Your Grief and Believement. Please, Wanja, kindly inbox me your address. You will get your book. And uh, the next book goes to Evangelist Luce Nyaga, Healing Hope and Your Believement. And the last one goes to Dancio Nemo, healing hope for your for your grief and believement. Kindly make sure that you inbox me your address so that we can make sure that you get that book uh, as your Christmas gift that is on the way coming. Uh, Morugi Jero saying here, oh, Morugi, thank you for mentioning the book. But uh, Morugi, you can email, you can inbox Dr. Penny. Dr. Penny can get you a copy, or you can go through Amazon and you can have that book. You don't need to have it as a hard copy. You can read it from your you from your phone, from your computer, from where you are, because it's uh, an ebook. If you if if you would if you would want it like that. So, uh, Rosano Iganjo, thank you very much. Selena saying powerful information. And Jane Irongo have already sent the link to the book. So if you just need the book, kindly check the link. And uh, a friend of mine here from Kenya is asking, how can I get this book, Dr. Penny? That's my friend from Kenya. Uh, tell them to inbox me. My son has some books in uh, in Kenya. I can link them. Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Peter Bungay, kindly link up with uh, Dr. Penny and uh, you will get your book delivered to your home. Uh, Evangelist, uh, no, Bishop Peter Healing Hope. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Bishop Peter. You again, we're going to send you again to Amazon or talk with Dr. Penny. And maybe Dr. Penny can, 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 can give you one, probably. Those, mm -hmm. those three that we gave are not from Dr. Penny, are from the Prepare TV. Please go and look for that book. Uh, uh, Peter saying, could you ask doctor in a situation where as a modern African man, where do you find that middle ground when a wife feels that he's not obligated to submit given that, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me read it again. Uh, could you ask doctor in a situation where as a modern African man, where do you find the middle, middle ground when a wife feels she isn't, she isn't obligated to submit, given that 
maybe she is equally empowered financially. What should a man do when he does not receive the respect he or she brought up knowing a husband should be accorded by the wife? The question is, uh, what should a man do if the woman is not respecting him? That's a very tricky one, and it all starts the, again. The, to me, if you ask me, there were there were some red flags that may be like me. He said, "I want peace. I want to get married," but now it has happened. And yeah, the issue of uh, where the wife is making more money than the the husband, I, or the other way around, even if the husband is making more money than the the the, the wife, this is an issue of priorities. The issue of valuing one another, and not the material. Because when you start devaluing another person because they are not bringing as much as you are bringing, it means there was the, really there was in the, there was some lack of commitment right from the word go. And this is where we see that if you really love her and you want and you want to keep your marriage, don't just jump out. Is there a way that you can both go for counseling? And I always encourage people. We are not, just like we say, we are now in a modern world. We have counseling going on. When I was going through my stuff, there was no counseling going on. We would go to our pastors, and I want, I know I do thank my bishop. I used to go to my bishop at all since Cathedral, and he supported us. But my, my husband was not willing to go for counseling. It takes two people to go for counseling. If only people would, would be willing to say, you know what, something is not working. Can we go and talk to somebody? Can we talk to a third party? Can you talk to your to your best you know, your best couple? But when there is that arrogance that oh just because somebody is making more money, they are not willing to submit to their husband or to their wife. And you know yourself, the man who is talking, if you know you are doing your very best, that you are not questionable yourself, find a way of talking it to her. Don't don't talk about these things when you are angry. Don't talk about it in a way of demanding. You know you must. You're supposed to submit to me and everything, despite whether you're making more money or not. They, I know she's making more money, but could it be also? What is your approach? How have you approached her just because she's making more money? I hear some men telling their wives, oh, just because you're making more money does not make you, make you any better than you, than me. That already there creates, uh, you, you, are, you are creating a competition. We need to remove the competition. If you are the one who is making less money, please don't use that against your wife. Because sometimes you're also setting your wives up, and allow me to say this without any bias. I have found it that those, they, when, when the husband is making less, they become angry and they use that against their wives. Instead of saying that, you know what, if she, brings, if she brings more money in the house, she's going to be helping the family as a whole. Use it to compliment her, use it to encourage her, but not to nag her, not to blame her, not to use it to tell how you are, you are, you are, you are refusing to submit just because you're making money. The way you come out of it will either make it or break it. If, it is, if, that, is, if that approach is not working, either involve your best couple or go for counseling. Grace is there as a professional counselor. We, I would say here, people are still keeping away from counseling. Why is it easy to buy a shoe for 10,000 shillings or 10,000 or $1,000? And when we tell you to go for counseling to save your marriage, to save your children, you think it is too much to pay me 100 or $150? You, there are very many, there are many, very many counselors. I encourage you, please value your marriage, value your children, value yourself enough to invest in yourself. I think that is a priority that we need to put right. Your life, both life as a family, your body is a lot more than a pair of shoes. It's a lot more than the clothes you wear. Because today you can wear all those things, but inside you are broken. So what is coming out of you? Anger, bitterness, you are irritable. Yes, you have the money, you saved your money, but you have these things bubbling out of you and you are hurting the very people you love. If you know that you are becoming unapproachable, please, and, and I think somebody said, looking for counseling, 
getting help is not a weakness. It takes a lot more to say, I need help. And by the way, allow me to say this before I leave, it takes a lot more to leave an abusive relationship than to stay. It takes a lot more to leave. And the hardest and the riskiest day in the life of an abused person is the day you walk out of that relationship. The day you say, I need help. I am going to look for a counselor. Those, that, those are your strongest moments. So stop feeling that if I say um, we are having a problem as a couple, it is not a weakness. Go, reach out for help because help is available. The other thing is I'm encouraging my fellow, my fellow pastors and ministers, let us take professional counseling seriously. Let's get training so that we cannot continue doing counseling the way we did it 20 years ago. I am constantly reading. I am, I am still in school, by the way. I am still reading because I want to talk a language that is relevant to you with our Modi. I want to be able to be relevant and I encourage all of us, please don't stop learning. The day you stop learning, that's the end of your life. And yes, back to that man, the, our brother who says that there is an issue of submission, handle it quietly. Don't go, don't, don't fight about it, but give it a trial. Find some counseling. Maybe she'll listen to somebody and then search yourself. How have you been responding to the fact that she's not making money? Could you, what did you, are you, is there anything you did to trigger that? If there is not, I'm not blaming and I'm not in any way saying you did, but I'm just raising things to consider in the process. And the other thing is a bishop says that a lot of our ministers don't come out to say that we are hurting. Guess what? The reason many is it is hard to say that is because if I had a church, which I don't, I minister in the in the in the open world. It is sometimes it is hard for a minister to come out and say that I am hurting because the congregation, this is where we as the congregation can help our ministers. You are looking up to them, you are looking up to the first lady, you are looking up to your minister. You never consider that they are parenting, they have parenting problems. They have, they have marital problems. When you take your problems to them, very rarely do we ask them, Reverend Penny or Reverend Gaduru, what, how are you doing? Is everything okay with you? Can I pray for you? You ask us to pray for you. I am giving it back to you. Pray for us. Think about us, encourage us, even if I don't tell you what I'm going through. I want to remind you, we, are, we also have issues with our families. And that is where sometimes the ministers of the gospel, the men of God and women of God are hurting quietly sure. until you hear they have committed a suicide or until you hear that they're also having domestic violence issues in their homes. Before they became ministers, we are human beings. And our children, we, I am a, a minister, but my children are not ministers. So please leave out the minister's children. Let them be children. I can go on and on and on, but thank you so much. Uh, let them be. <laughs> uh, thank you uh, again, uh, Leveled Penny, because uh, we can just sit here and listen to you, because uh, the wisdom that you have, the, it, it's just but too much. And these are the things that uh, most of us are going through knowingly or unknowingly thinking that this person might change and uh, it doesn't get there and uh, thank you again uh, now uh, there is some good news here uh, we gave three books and uh, Jane Irongo said that uh, he's gonna give two more books now we are giving five books so uh, give one to the bishop give one to the bishop <laughs> already bishop you have one book from uh, the one that uh, th the book that uh, Jane is donating is going straight to the bishop and please can we have maybe two or three people who don't wanna, again want to donate a book if uh, Thank you. we already have five now if you can get uh, five more to give ten books we will be very happy before we end this program Let's and have... thank you so much, Jane, for promoting my book and all also you the work I do. Thank you for promoting the book. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Jane. Jane already gave two books. So please, Bishop, again, kindly inbox me your address 
And uh, who was the next person after Bishop? Should be Morugi Njero. Please, Morugi Njero and Bishop, kindly uh, send your address to me, inbox me your address, so that you can get a copy of that book. Even if you're, you're in Kenya, let us know. We'll make sure that you get your book. Uh, can we get somebody else who can be able to donate to us two more books? We kindly request if you can be able to buy for us two more books so that we can be able to give them here on the program. We have already given five books and uh, we would want to give 10. We want to give uh, Dr. Penny a uh, nice Christmas people to go and read the book because it's important. We need to go and see if those kind of grief, those things that goes, goes there behind the scene. And uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Penny just said it, it's a uh, sorry, grief. It's not, uh, most of us realize that grief is when you, when somebody dies. We go a lot, a many kinds of grief. You are fired from work. You are divorced. You are going through domestic violence. You are, your friends are getting off you. So there, there is a lot. And all those kind of griefs are listed in this book. Let's support. Let's buy this book. Let's read this book. That's one of the best Christmas that you can be able to give to Dr. Penny and to the Prepare TV. We just give out three, uh, five more books and uh, we'll, 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 we'll be very happy as we leave this program tonight. And uh, people are continuing to watch and listening. And uh, again, I want to remind you that uh, this program is uh, brought to you and uh, is powered or is sponsored by the Community Health and uh, Life Covenant Church under the leadership of uh, Pastor Martin Degua. Thank you very much, Pastor Martin, for sponsoring and uh, allowing God to use you during this time of uh, COVID-19. And now uh, we want to remind you that uh, please, if you are sick, kindly stay at home. If you're not feeling well, stay at home. If you don't have to go to the gathering, kindly stay at home. If you are going to the store, make sure you have your mask. Make sure you are washing your hand. Make sure you are, don't go touching, touching things. If you meet with your friends, you know one thing uh, with COVID-19 is that a person who is COVID-19 is looks like you exactly. And mm -hmm. other people do not have symptoms. That is very important. That is very key. Not all of us that have symptoms. Please, remember, keep everyone like he or she has COVID-19. And please, let me make sure that uh, we are doing that and uh, we are doing what we are supposed to do. If you are told not to go out for gathering, please remember to stay at home. So we get more books and we really, we really like it. Uh, we have uh, Ruth Wanjema. Thank you very much, uh, Ruth Wanjema said that I will buy three copies. Did you hear that? Wow. Uh, Ruth Wanjema is a, is, is a, is a, is a counselor too. And uh, she's a pastor's wife, Leverend Mwara. They minister mm -hmm. in a church by the name Diaspora Community of Faith. So we have three books that are already bought by. Thank you very much, uh, Mama Recho, and may the good God bless you. And then we have... Uh, I will buy a copy for someone. That is uh, Dancio Nemo. Thank you very much, Dancio. And he said that uh, he will buy a copy for someone. And uh, Selena says that uh, hearing hope and grief and bereavement. The best thing, Selena, you can just do now. Go to my phone and, and you have my number. Just text me your address. Please, Selena, go there and text me your address so that we can make sure by Christmas all these books are with you. Uh, maybe we can have two more people to give us two more books and we really like these. Eh? You know, it's always good to support. It's always good to, to build the next generation because that's what we are called for. And thank you so much, everyone who is donating a book. We like it. We, it's good to lead. It's good to support Lebron Penny. And she has been there talking for us for about two hours. And uh, if I can check my watch, it's almost 1 a.m. Uh, at Birmingham. And uh, Dr. Penny is there. I know she's a very busy woman. She does a lot of counseling through the telephone, through the Skype. So if uh, you're there and you're you're going through something and you fear to go and meet a physical counselor, Dr. Penny is here with you. Please make sure you can give Dr. Penny a call. Uh, Dr. Penny, maybe you can mention something about uh, you're a psychiatrist. Psychi psychi psych psychologist. 
psychologist and, 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 and what else? I am a psychologist. I'm also a, me a full-time mental health provider. Mm -hmm. So depression, stress, suicidal ideas, mm -hmm. marital problems, parenting. Thank I'm you. also a life coach. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Penny. And uh, something that uh, maybe you can just talk in passing. Uh, I, I was trying to, to bring it home, uh, but now I can bring it home. Uh, in this country, most of the time, a lot of us are maybe, for instance, somebody want to go into the military, and that person, in one way or another, he or she messed up with the, with the life. Or maybe somebody is getting married, and along the line, those people messed their life. How do you help them? Uh, thank you for you know I think I like you said I'm a jack of all trade I for I tend to forget one of the some of these things I'm actually qualified to do professional psychological evaluations where you need a psychologist to evaluate you and write an, a professional letter to IRS I do that for your IRS processes for or somebody wants to get into the military and they want you to have a professional evaluation. I do that. And I, I can boldly and confidently say that I would, I would be relevant because you can tell a Mr. Jones and a Mr. J, Mr. Smith what you are going through, but they will go back to the books and read what you are telling them. But you tell me about Mongeke, you tell me about you know the Rift Valley and everything where you are coming from of the F or the FGM. I will not have to go reading because it is it is a culture I have lived in. These are experiences I have lived through. So I, I am confident in saying that I am equipped, not just professionally, but also from our cultural perspective. I am relevant in what people are going through. So I do do those letters. And I, I have had a, a, a successful record with the ones I have, for whom I have written those letters I have several people who have qualified and gotten into the military because I did a psychological evaluation for them. I've also, those who are, who are looking for things like, you know, asylum and everything, that they need an evaluation to, to, to certify what they are saying. I do those letters and I've, I've had success with those letters. So if you are there and you, you are in that need, or, and I know we are going to get into that phase, we are praying that when, you know, come January, God is going to start doing things. You know what I'm talking about, makaratasis and everything. We are praying that when we get there, when you know, where if you need these letters, just inbox me and let me know and we, we can talk about it. Thank you, Dr. Penny. That's again a good wisdom. So please, if you're there and you need any psychological evaluation, Dr. Penny is uh, registered by the... Is it only the state of Alabama? No, I do. I am a I am a commissioned pastoral counselor, so I am across the board. Thank you. It's good I am you. across. I am across the board, and I'm, I also have my own private practice, Angel Counseling Services LLC, oh, and I'm I'm stationed in Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you. Uh, and Pastor Esther is saying, "Amen." Great wisdom. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Idawa Gaviru and Dr. Penny. I will refer a friend for counseling. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Esther. And, uh, thank we'll, you. Uh, yeah, that's Pastor Esther. And one book will go to Pastor Esther. Thank you. Yeah. Have, yeah, uh, and just, just to emphasize that, yes, I do telehealth counseling, which is tele online counseling where you call me, make an appointment, and we agree, and you call me when, when the appointment, just like you came to my office. I do have an office, but providentially, now we are not meeting in any offices, so by God's grace, I'm able to do it from wherever you are to where I am. Thank you, thank you. So if you want need to, and Dr. Penny, how can we get you? What are the phone number? What are the pages? What are the email address? How, how? Uh, you can you can inbox me on my Facebook live and I also have actually I have a YouTube healing with Dr. Penny healing with Dr. Penny and then my you can also get me on 
I, I think inbox me because I don't want to give my myself on the you know on the line like that. But uh, if you inbox me, I'll give you all the details. Uh, thank you, Doctor. And uh, somebody is saying, uh, can we get your phone number? But uh, I'm just tell them that uh, if you need to talk to Doctor Penny, just go to his uh, inbox, and uh, you can yes. be able to communicate there, and you can be able to tell Dr. Penny what you want, and then by that you can be able to get her phone number. And uh, her Facebook page is uh, Reverend Dutch Dr. Penny W. Joroge. Reverend yeah. Dr. Penny Joroge. Go there, talk to Dr. Penny, and uh, you will be able to get help. Uh, there's uh, one thing that I, I would leave to run here. I love this program. Very resourceful, Darrow. The information is important especially currently. Thank you very much, Stella Kwaboka, and uh, God bless you. So, uh, from this end, Dr. Penny, would like to say a big thank you to you for- Thank you. For this wonderful time that you just shared with us. And now uh, we cannot be able to thank you enough. You cannot be able to pay you enough. Where well, you may just say that uh, may God continue to bless you continue to increase your wisdom because God has given you so much wisdom and this generation really needs this wisdom. So we know it's very late. It's almost 1.24 a.m. That is very, very, very late. And I know tomorrow is Saturday and I know you have a busy day, but you chose to come here and prepare TV and back to the basics program so that you may impact our people, so that you may talk to us and uh, we, 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 we are short of words to say thank you and God bless you. And finally, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and God see you through in everything that you do. Anything you tell our viewers? No, I just want to thank you and appreciate every person who took time to sit and listen with me because it's, it wasn't just me talking. I, I I like the fact that it was interactive. I wasn't just talking to myself. I was not teaching. We are interactive. Even though I couldn't see your faces, I can tell there was a lot of interaction and I value that because you give me reason to live and continue doing what I am doing and for you the work I do and, uh, and prepare TV. These forums are making a difference in our community, whether those who are listening from here in the diaspora, those who are listening back home and wherever. This is one thing I am taking out of uh, COVID-19 and I'm saying, I, I have kept on asking people, I want you to look back and say at the end of COVID-19, what will you say was a blessing in disguise? And for me, it is these Zoom meetings Today we are speaking with the, with people across the board. We have a global meeting. We will, we would never have thought about this. So Corona or no Corona, God has given us something a lot more beautiful. That while I used to speak in a in a big hospital, now I I speak uh, you know across the board. God has given me a global meeting and has given you a global I mean a global ministry. And so is you as either Waga through and every one of us who is listening, wherever you are, remember that you are here for such a time as this. We are in this together. You have something you can contribute. Don't wait for others to contribute. I want to challenge all of us, please. I, I reminded us that you are beautiful and you are unique. I know something, but you also know other things I don't know. I, I want to, to invite the rest of you who are listening that, you are gifted in your own special way. Please come out and share. Get a, a, a place from either Waga through and come and teach us also. Come and tell us something. Isaiah 1, 8 says, come, let us reason together. The Lord knew that we would need a time like this to come and reason together. Yes, it is 1.30 p.m. 1 a.m. And I have a program at 10 in the morning. So for those hours that I'll sleep, the God will give me that rest and may he also give you the rest and put meaning in your life. This is the only way we are going to make the world a better place for my grandchildren, for your grandchildren, for generations to come. Let us not leave it the way we found it. It's not about money. It's not about big cars, but it is what can you give? What can I give? So I am honored to have given this time and I'm honored even to have received 
your encouragement and your affirmation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Penny. Uh, if we could be here, we can just stay yeah. here and just fold our <laughs> arms and just listen to you. The thank wisdom you. is just but too much. And now uh, we thank God for you and uh, for everyone else who was able to log in tonight to to hear, to, to walk with us since we started this debate. May the good God again continue to bless you. And uh, this will be our last program for this year 20. 20 we will do our next program next year january so for this coming friday this is christmas the other one is first of december first of january we'll not be able to have our programs but believe me and be less assured but the first week of january we will have a program and other people are saying that uh, dr penny we need to bring you back very soon that's what they are saying we need, you need Amen. to come back again and uh people are before we leave, uh, I would want to, I want to give, uh, I have two more books that are remaining and I don't know who I, I, I'm going to give the two books. Please, if you are there and you need a book, kindly write the name, uh, write the, the name of the book and then inbox me so that we can be able to give you those two books. Uh, thank you so much and Idawagaviru for the platform. God bless you, Dr. Penny. May God anoint you more and more thank you very much and uh, to everyone else who was able to log in today god bless you see you have a merry christmas a happy new year and be safe don't, don't make sure that you are, you're taking good care of yourself because we want to go with you to 2021 attack to quarter 2020 with uh, the, the the covid thing we want to jump together with you the 2021 so please make sure that you celebrate christmas and remember that covid is real celebrate it with your family and if you have something more that you can share this christmas we are encouraging people to be good neighbors ustume to christmas kwenu nyumbani Send it to your neighbor who is there next. Just 2,000, 1,000. If you're in diaspora, you can manage to feed three or four families. Let that the government is not helping our people. And us, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Please, if you're there, if you can be able to, to, give, to be a blessing to somebody, God will bless you. And if you do that, that would be very helpful. And we believe that the year 2021 will be a year that we shall all celebrate the way we have celebrated 2020. We don't say that 2020 was a bad year. No, it was a good year. With all these challenges, God have enabled us to move on and see 2021. So, please, let's make sure that we are taking good care of ourselves. And again, I want to remind you that this program was sponsored by a Covenant Live church under the leadership of pastor martin degoa and please thank you very much pastor martin and uh, and the entire team of uh covenant life church and community health and they have always kept on reminding us make sure you have your mask don't go to the gathering if you have to stay home stay home and do what you're supposed to do and the last thing make sure you have a good quarantining you, you have a good plan for quarantine what would you do in case COVID-19 comes to your door? What plan do you have? And God will bless you. And for those that have promised that they're gonna buy the books, I'll be having the yeah, I'll be having the address of all the people that we're gonna be giving Christmas. Thank you very much, Dr. Penny, for giving people Christmas to lead your book for free. And uh, we will really appreciate. For so please, if I if I give you a book, please kindly make sure that uh, you jump there. Throw your, throw your address to me so that by Christmas we would want you to have that as a Christmas gift for that book. God bless you. Do you good and good night and good morning and we love you and we are praying for you. May the good God continue to bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you and good night. Good night. <laughs>